Well, hey everybody, and welcome again to another edition of the Mountaintop Comic Review. I'm Charlie. And I'm Richard. And I'm Sawyer. And today, we've got a full show for you, and it's kind of unfortunate because I feel like death. Oh, no. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I think I've got some kind of cold, maybe a, a influenza virus. Gosh. I might turn into a zombie later. Who That's knows? not good. Yeah. Sawyer, get your axe ready. <laughs> <laughs> You would take me out? No, I was. I was sore. He's got. He's got a bunch of weapons under the table would, for I would emergency purposes. Take you. Well, of course you would. Yeah. yeah. Because you're yeah. jealous. You're jealous of the star of the show. Sure. Sure. <laughs> yeah. We'll go. We'll go with that. <laughs> Wait a minute. Maybe you're the one that got me sick. Do I look sick? No, but you could have spiked my coffee or something like Doesn't that. Does your dad like work for the CDC or something? Sorry. Center of Disease Control for those of you. Accurate. We don't have any time yeah, for this. Okay. Enough of the jibber jabber. We got a full show. The Mountain Top Comic Review starts right now. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for your comic book culture news. You know, I'm really enjoying the fact that you guys have to sit so close to me because I am dying of some kind of sickness, and you are going to die with me. Uh, <laughs> uh, together to the it's end, gonna right? Spread. Yeah. It's going to spread. Oh. <laughs> All right. Story number one, after 25 years, you know, we actually should have mentioned this last week. I don't know why we didn't mention this last week. After 25 years, DC is shutting down the doors of Vertigo Imprint. Mm. DC's adult-only imprint was once home to comic greats as the Sandman, Why the Last Man, and Fables. Vertigo has earned a share of its share of troubles over the last uh, several years, and it's such a shame too because they were just celebrating their 25th anniversary. Mm. It's a bummer. That's kind of sad. I mean, yeah. Swamp Thing too is part of that Vertigo yes. line. Yes, Animal it was. Man a little bit. So I mean, like you know, with Swamp Thing being big, I was kind of saddened by that too, Charlie. Yeah. yeah. Now they're doing a fusion of some sort, right? Are they still going to keep the characters? Well, uh, yes. I mean, they're all going to be under the big DC umbrella. Right. But, I mean, what, what's that? What, what's the line with uh, Batman Damned? What is that? Uh, uh, dark label or black label? Black, black label. label. So yes. I mean, that kind of takes the place. Of Vertigo. Right. So it's kind of like, it's is it needed now? I mean, you know. The loyals it, out there, you know, who followed Vertigo might. It, yeah. I mean, you probably wouldn't have known much of Vertigo because this was before your time. And it's adults only. Mm. And Sawyer is just a little fella. <laughs> <laughs> oh, anyway, sorry. Vertigo Easy. is shutting the doors in 2020. Such a sad, sad story. Uh, also, my little notes here. DC has introduced a new line of horror comics. Oh, yes. That's horror, H-O-R-R-O-R. -R -R. Yeah. Scary comics. Yeah. And it's being brought by Joe Hill of Lock mm -hmm. and Key fame. Now, they're not only scary comics, they're going to be pop-up comics. Yeah, now. Define yeah. pop-up. We talking like features like, coming out? When you were a kid yeah. and you had the pop-up books, yeah. same concept. Yeah, I did not know comic, that. pop-up, 3D. That is cool. So you can wow. really get Spooked yeah, you by could. something coming at yeah, you, right? Yeah, yeah. Nice. Uh, once again, it, from Joe Hill of of uh, Lock and Key fame. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know this. How I didn't know this, I don't know. But Joe Hill is actually Stephen King's son. Yeah? Did that's you know great. that? No, I did not. I was thinking the Hill House. I was thinking there's something tied in for that because of the Netflix thing that's big right now. Yeah. But it's not, I did not know that off the top yeah. of my life. That's and incredible. if you look up a picture of Joe Hill, mm -hmm. he looks identical to Stephen King. That's insane. Because the first thing that came out what of my uh, ill-informed mouth was, mm -hmm. hey, that looks like Stephen King. Well, that's why. That. That's cool, Charlie. Yeah, yeah, I saw that too. And there's like a little mini backstory that's going to be building in the back. Yes, actually, it's not just one. No, 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 no. There's going to be multiple yeah. different comics on this line. Yeah, I'm so, excited. I'm yeah. excited, man. Uh, and just in time for Halloween too. I hear. Absolutely. Ooh. Absolutely. Uh, and also, just to plug it a little bit, if you haven't uh, picked up Lock and Key, it is fantastic. Ooh, okay. Okay. Yeah, if you haven't got any of the trades, you can get those here at Mountaintop Comics here in Cookville, Tennessee. Nice. Great, great, great comic. All right, Richard, what kind of stories have you got for us? Well, uh, my phone rang last night, and I picked it up, and it was some Ghostbuster information. So oh, who are you going to call? Wow. Paul Rudd, they call, that is. Ant-Man from, you know, the Marvel movies. He is going to be in the Ghostbuster film. We got a teaser trailer, you know, earlier this year or last year, and um, I'm just super excited. Yeah. Paul Rudd's supposed to play a teacher, 
And, oh, okay. I mean, that's all we know so far. And there's a little YouTube video we'll put on our, our Facebook page. Um, but uh, uh, Jason Reitman, Ivan Reitman's son, will be directing it. And it's oh, gonna really? Be, yeah, so uh, we're taking it, and Ew. it's going to be a direct sequel to the original trilogy of Ghostbusters. Uh, not trilogy, the original... Uh, yeah, we duology. Wanna, duology. We don't want, so it's not going to be tied into the all female cast. Mm-hmm. It's going to kind of skip that. Who knows? We might get cameos. There are even talks of um, pulling in some Stranger Things um, actors and actresses, possibly in this film. So we don't know if Paul Rudd is going to be, you know, proton blasting and trapping some ghosts, but we do know he's going to be. I in think it. he'll probably end up if he's playing a teacher. I'm thinking he's going to take the role of Rick Moranis. Not e- okay. You kind think kind so? of you in a different. So? Well, not. Yeah. He's going to be a character that is involved with the Ghostbusters. I, I don't a know if he'll be character. one of the... Gotcha. But maybe. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe Sawyer, I'm wrong. what do you think? Were you a fan of the Ghostbusters, man? I've seen the first Ghostbusters movie, and I, I, I love it. It's a really good movie, and I really like Paul Rudd, a.k.a. the man who apparently doesn't age. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he doesn't. He's no. like, what, 30 still? No, I'm just I don't know. Yeah. I think he's 50 recently. Yeah. But did you... So were you guys a fan of the original, two oh, or more it. of the trilogy? Love all of it. Ghostbusters. When I was all a kid, uh, I probably saw it in the theater like five, six times. Loved it. Oh, wow. Loved it. That's Loved awesome. It. Same. Big fan. Um, other news that I've got for you guys is um, Jeremy Renner, Hawkeye. So mm-hmm. I'm covering all the uh, Avengers out there. Yeah. He has left the acting field. Um, not completely. He's kind of taking a side career opportunity. He has released a single. A song. That's right. It came out Friday. I woke up in bed, turned around. I was like, I told my wife, you got to hear this. And the name of the song, I mean, you might you might like it, you might not out there. It's You've called, heard the song? I've heard it. Heaven Don't Have a Name. Have you heard the song? Heaven no. Don't Have a Name. Jeremy, <laughs> he's, one might say he might have, you know, shot an arrow to the, he might have hit the bullseye, he might not have on this song, wah, play on wah, Hawkeye wah. words. But he, um, so it's covered. So originally there's a guy called Sam Fields and he, he sang backup vocals or he collaborated. Right. He decided to redo the whole song. And that's it. He's actually coming out with a full-length album. Jeremy Renner, what? Hawkeye, has a full-length album. That's right. And yeah, he's done some other side stuff. So he's covered House of the Rising Sun. He did um, the mm, Crash Dummy song. In no. Some, uh, yes, in the tag movie he was Ew. in. Ew. Yeah, so Jeremy Renner, single. They say it could be the song of the summer, guys. <laughs> yeah, all right. I don't know if I can go with that or not. Uh, Sawyer, what kind of news have you got for us? Well, Absolute Carnage's creative team, Donnie Cates and Ryan Stegman, are looking to outsell the best-selling comic of all time. Yeah, I heard that. What what, what, what number were they shooting for? They're shooting for 8,104,611 copies. That's 8 million? So Come on. Well, Mike's got like, what, 5 million purchased, right? Yeah. yeah. They're <laughs> all here to be here in the store. store. Oh, yeah. Everybody's got to come here to get it. Yeah. 8 million. Yeah. And if they meet the goal, they're going to offer a percentage off on the book. <laughs> not, not a very big one. How much is it, so like, like 15%. Oh, that's wow. A good, that's a good number. Very nice. Yeah. Really nice of them. But Eight million. That's kind of sh- that's that's hoop dreams. I, I'm afraid. Oh, I mean, God. I would love for a comic to sell eight million copies, but we're in a different age now. Yeah. I, maybe. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. It releases on August seventh with a completely red variant cover, one in two hundred. So you know they do the white blank covers. They're mm-hmm. gonna do a red blank cover. 1 in 200 variant. So, August 7th rolls around. I guess we'll see if they hit that goal. (laughs) Yeah, we'll see. All right. Okay, story number two, Sawyer. Spider-Man Far From Home, less than a week away, comes out next Tuesday, July 2nd. I am excited. Yeah, got your tickets, man. I don't know if we've got my tickets, but I'm definitely going to go see it on Tuesday. Absolutely. Yeah, same. I've got some big Seeing Mysterio on the bit. I love Mysterio. Mysterio, yeah. Do you like Mysterio? Yeah, I I like him pretty good. I'm curious to see Jake Gyllenhaal's take on this Mysterio, too, because he looks like he's a good guy, maybe, but he also has full, he's full of illusions. Yeah. He's not full of crap, he's full of illusions. Yeah. So, uh, um, any of the classic yeah. Spider-Man villains, mm-hmm. I just love them. So, yeah. Mysterio, I'm down. Right? Symbiote Spider-Man that's out right now, right guys? Has mm-hmm. Mysterio as the um, main, main antagonist. villain. Antagonist, yep. thank you. Always switch protagonist. But yes. But, but anyways, anyways yeah. 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 Hey, got it. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, that is your comic book culture news for this week.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for the Mountaintop Comic Roundtable Review, where we discuss a book that we all read over this last week. And I am not going to say anything right now. I'm going to let you start because I have nothing oh, good my to say. Yes, with the War of Realms conclusion, Charlie. Nothing. Not War it. of Realms number six is what we're going to be discussing today, and Richard is going to lead us off. I guess I can do it. Go All ahead. Right, so it's written by Jason Aaron and drawn by Ryan Dodderman. I think that's how you say it. Jason, that good over there? Ryan Dodderman? Yeah. Okay. I'm taking the thumbs up. Maybe. And it's the epic conclusion to this big, big summer <laughs> blockbuster event. Um, and I, I was, I was on the, I was riding that Pegasus horse into the storyline, trying to be mythological with this. And I liked it. I thought it was really well done. I, I thought it wrapped up. I, I, you know, we were talking the very last page. Um, are, we just, are we talking about all of it, guys? No, oh, yeah. Okay, oh, yeah. I, I'll leave that for you, Charlie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I liked it. Um, so Thor is set up, and um, he, you know, he's, he's hanging literally upside down in the sun, right, Sawyer? Yeah. And he doesn't sacrifice an arm and a leg because he's already sacrificed an arm. But he sacrifices his eye, right? <laughs> and the only piece of Yuri, Uri, however you say it, metal. And we don't know why until later on the story. But, um, I mean, he gets, he gets the hammer. Mm -hmm. And finally, I've been talking to a bunch of friends about this. When's he going to come worthy again? When's he going to become worthy? And he finally does. Mm -hmm. And Sora and I were talking. And I'm curious, Sora, why do you think he was able to pick up the hammer, man? Well, and defeat Malekith, the Dark Elf, because that's the whole antagonist I'm in the story. I'm thinking that since Mjolnir, his hammer, was reforged by the World Tree, mm -hmm. and Thor was also, you know, quote unquote, reforged mm -hmm. by the World Tree, mm -hmm. maybe there's some <laughs> connection, so the World Tree has deemed him worthy again. And then, so we were talking, I was like, man, I really like that, and I showed mine, I was like, I think he had to realize that to be worthy, you have to be unworthy to hold the hammer. So, like, you can't have this big head about it. You have to kind of, like, be un... You don't have... I don't know. It's like an ego thing, I thought, that Thor kind of had. Because young Thor, reading Jason Aaron's, you know, um, his flashbacks, because he does of the different Thors, one in the past and one in the future, and you get to see those three Thors come together, including Jane Foster. She picks up, not her uh, Mjolnir, but she picks up a Warhammer Thor mm -hmm. um, hammer, which is the ultimate Thor's hammer. Mm -hmm. And... Um, Volstagg used it and went crazy. And yes, it was awesome. Did. And I thought they should have used him again. But Jane Foster's in there. And you see all the Thors go against Malekith, enhanced by the Sawyer. Venom. Venom sword thing. Sword thing. <laughs> right? The Necro. He, he says, call it what the you necrosaur, want. Yeah. But, I mean, they pound him down. There's even a scene where Thor's punching his own... Uh, punching a hammer that's not Mjolnir, but he's punching that sucker, just pure Viking um, um, rage, and he's just going at it. And, I mean, the heroes, what are the other heroes doing? The Avengers, the street, you know, all the, they're working against Lofi, um, Loki's dad. Mm. And Loki does, he kind of... He comes back, back he's not yeah. dead. Talk about bad indigestion. <laughs> um, uh, Loki's dad is about to release the Casket of Winters in New York, and all the heroes are kind of like getting frozen. And um, Loki just, like, uh, Daredevil throws the sword, right? Well, yeah. Tell us about the sword. Like, what's going on with Daredevil? Well, Daredevil became the god without fear after Heimdall gave him the sword that he uses to no, control. No, 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 no Charles. <laughs> no. I'm waiting for my turn. <laughs> Anyways, long story short, they defeat him. I mean, they, they crack down the ultimate hammer. And what I thought was um, kind of silly, you know, because I kind of wanted Thor just to knock Malekith out of it, and he does knock the symbiote right out of him. Mm -hmm. But um, the dogs of his uh, war Lord of uh, dogs. war dogs, I wrote it down. Um, his uh, Lord of the Wild Hunt, like packs Good. of wild animals, tear him apart because he has fear. Mm -hmm. I guess fear that he's going to lose. I mean, literally all of his. He tried to transform and take over the world. All of it was gone. So, so what do you think? Well, now the wiggle it. Okay. So what did you give? War of Realms. You know, we're, we're talking about number six. What was your overall review for War of Realms? Like, what are you doing, CGC, man? Yep, the absolutely. CGC in this, the stamp of approval? Yep, and it, let me get our, uh, our uh, oh, 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 guide yeah, yeah, out yeah. here so for So for those you. of you who don't know, we have a CGC scale where we do our group review. Mm -hmm. uh, Ten being Jim, a mint, mint, um, and then um, nine mint, eight near mint, seven very fine, six fine, five very good, four good, three less than good. Two poor and one less, less than, than poor. poor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, 
I don't know. I'm a sucker for art, and I'm a sucker for writing, and I'm a mm. sucker for redemption, mm. and I'm a sucker for this book. So I'm going to give it a 10, guys. What the devil? Okay, I'm so sorry. sorry. Now, yes, I liked the book. Now, I'm not going to give it a 10. It was, it was not a 10. It definitely had flaws. But it was a really good book with art done by... Russell Dodderman. Oh, who did I say? Robert? Ro not Ryan Dodderman. Oh, no. So I am going to give it an 8 near mint. 10? 8? Am, am I in some kind of alternate universe where I got a different <laughs> War of Realms book? This was, and here's the crazy thing. Yeah. I have always been very positive mm -hmm. when it comes to comics. <laughs> always. But yeah. for some reason, yeah. I'm getting the duds. Last week we had Superman Year One, mm -hmm. which I gave it a four. Yeah, and I didn't think it was very good at all. This was horrible, 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 horrible. I was not a fan of War of Realms at all. The tie-in books, I felt like in the past, if you get the main books, you can keep up with the story. Yeah. But I felt like the main books were so choppy. Unless you got all of the tie-ins, you really didn't get what the whole story was about. Gotcha. I, oh my, uh, the what dialogue was, was absolutely cringe-inducing yeah. at times. At one point, we see, and if you recall, we see Loki bit in half. Yeah, yeah. He's okay. Yeah. We see <laughs> Odin and his wife, Lady Freya. Mm-hmm. Literally vaporized. Do you remember that? Yeah, but they're gods, so you, omnipotent. Re they were vaporized. Re but all of a sudden, yeah. they. Yeah. But what I, was the, the last page? Oh. Why did it bother you? Tell me, because oh. I didn't want to say that last page. Yeah. Okay, Just Odin is kneeling to Thor. Bow down. He <laughs> bowed down. And it's happened for he's become King Thor, but Odin was not in the oh. picture. Like yeah. I think, you know, he had stepped out. But he's looking more like, oh, he's got one eye. What do you think about his one eye? Uh, he's looking more like future Thor. Yeah. 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 And he's got the Ultimo. I mean, you know, he's got the... He's got it the was hand, good the seeing the, the return yeah. of Molnir. Yeah, yeah. It was great getting to see the return yeah. of Molnir. Yeah. Did, did I, you see the insignia? What the phrase said? Now, it, oh, yeah, yeah, it's not yeah. All, it's no longer he. It's no longer she. It's just nothing. Yeah. So anybody can pick... Well, Thor's got it right now. Right, so. right. I just... I, I, from, and I went into this very excited, but I have got to say this was absolutely horrible. I hated it. I'm so glad this is over. I'm sorry. I don't want to be Mr. Poopy Pants all the time, but it was awful. I'm not giving it a four. What are you giving I'm it? I'm giving it a one. Whoa, we went polar opposite, Charlie? I am going less Whoa. than poor. This was atrocious in every way. I am thankful, so thankful, it is over. War of Realms, that's what I've got to oh, say man. about that. Wow. So, 10, ten. Eight, 1. That is your Mountaintop Comic Roundtable review for this week. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for our our personal reviews. What yeah. we picked up this week, what did we think was good? I've uh, There was a lot of stuff. I, I, I stuff had a hard choose. time actually deciding mm -hmm, what mm -hmm. I was going to review this week, but I've got them. Uh, my first pick of this week is Amazing Spider-Man number 24. This is the first issue out of Craven's, la well, not Craven's Last Hunt. What was it? Uh, Craven's Hunted. The Hunted. The Hunted, yes. Yeah. Anyway, this is great. It is, yeah. Peter Parker is dealing with the fact that he had this vision or dream that Mary Jane was dead. And he is having a hard time snapping out of it. We're about to go into something bigger. Mm -hmm. And I'm, this is where it all begins. Yes. We are introduced into with a new villain. Blah, 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 learn how to talk stupid. We're introduced to a new villain in the Kindred. Uh -huh. We learn his name yes. at the last panel. And it is, I, I'm telling you, Nick 
Spencer is knocking it out of the park. Agreed. I am loving this. Amazing Spider-Man number 24. Uh, Richard. Um, mine is a little different. Mighty Power Rangers, issue 40, mm -hmm. Necessary Evil. It's by, um, let's see, I can't ever say his last name, Ryan Parrott and Danielle De Nicolo. Um, is there a time jump? We're introduced to the White Ranger, first mm -hmm. appearance. Uh, growing up, I was a big fan of the Power Rangers. So White Ranger was formerly green, and there's a time jump after the Shattered Grid. Um, this is the this is the story arc. So we get uh, not only that we get a new Red Ranger, we get a new Yellow Ranger, and a new Black Ranger. And you know, picking this up, I thought, oh, it's just going to be Rangers fighting a villain because this is my very first issue. I thought it was a good jumping off oh, point, okay. and I liked it. I really do. It deals with more of the social drama and like the White Ranger dealing with his powers and how it's affecting him. But I mean, I'm kind of I'm I'm on board. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm going to see where um, it goes. Um, if you're a big Power Rangers fan, um, you should check it out because uh, Lord Zed is now the new big bad. It's not Rita Repulsa. So, not your silly old TV show. A little bit more of a layer by Boom Studios. Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, issue 40. Sawyer! My first pick is Transformers Ghostbusters number one. Now, I like both Transformers and Ghostbusters. Mm -hmm. And to see them come together, yes. that, Interesting. that was great. I thought it was great. You saw an Autobot become the Ecto-1 car, cool. which was really cool. Cool. And it was a short, sweet book. <laughs> got right to the point, and it introduced everything you needed to go know to go into the series. And there's a toy coming out, right? I yeah. hope so. There I is. Would, there I is. There's a Transformer Ecto-1 that. car. It's cool. I don't know. Just remember. Interesting. All right, my second uh, review is actually one that I haven't read since I was like 13 years yeah, old. you're saying that. It's Spawn number 298. This is the road to 300. I haven't got Spawn in many, many years. Wow. And this, I am so glad I did because this is awesome. We all know Spawn is Al Simmons. He was a a uh, government agent, well, not a government agent, a government soldier, right, right, a mercenary, right. and was killed. Well, he is alive as Spawn, and now people are starting to realize who Spawn is. Hmm. He's been popping up on live stream videos on the internet saying, Hello, I'm Al Simmons, and this is oh, my story. He's flat out telling his identity, not yes. just saying, Oh, wow. And wow. he is out to uh, whistleblow on the government agencies that did him wrong in the first place. This is awesome! The road to 300 is going right now, and I'm on board for good. Wow, 300. This, oh, cool. I, and I'm telling you, uh, you can actually pick up issue 296, I believe, and it is a perfect starting point because it gives you the whole origin story. I mean, everything that's happened up until this point you can read it in 296 and 297, and here we are with 298. It's Spawn 298, The Road to 300, by Image Comics. Fantastic. Richard. Uh, my next pick is Avengers issue 20. Um, it does somewhat have a bit of a tie-in to the War Realms, not specifically, but it's, uh, again, by Closure is Charlie, Jason Aaron, and, and but the artist... Um, you can open them now. Um, Ed McGinnis. And I think Ed McGinnis is a really good artist, especially when it comes to hulks. He bulks everybody out. Mm. Um, and just anything in general. But it's it's Jennifer Walters, um, a.k.a. the She-Hulk. Mm -hmm. And she first appeared in Savage She-Hulk, issue 1, 1980. And um, what's really cool is it's more of a, a piece just about her. How she's dealing with her new forms of transformation. Mm -hmm. um, basically, uh, She-Hulk is... She could transform into the Hulk, but more of um, a lean and not yes. meaner yeah. um, Hulk. And yeah. she was in control. She became a lawyer for a little bit. Mm -hmm. And recently, when she fought Thanos, she had some issues start happening with mm -hmm. her. She started to turn different colors, like gray. Mm -hmm. um, so how she became the Hulk, I almost forgot to say, blood transfusion yep. from Bruce, oh. the yep. original Hulk. Yep. So she that's, was shot. She was shot, yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, in this one right here, she learns to cope and deal with the different Hulks in her mind. And she's still learning... Um, and she was also powered up by a celestial, um, so she's extra like extra bulked out and and Hulk and she does brief sentences and all that. And my biggest thing about this book is she's learning to accept herself for who she is now and not try to come back to who she was. So I kind of see that acceptance. And one of the last lines in the book is "Ugly is beautiful," and I thought that was a good positive phrase right there. You know, it doesn't have to be perfect cookie cutter kind of people. And she talks about the um, things that male heroes would just, you know, kind of be offensive to her. Mm -hmm. And I like that. It was kind of an empowering book. 
just saying, you know, you don't have to be perfect. Ugly is beautiful. And it was, I mean, it was kind of different. Ugly it's called is this, beautiful. Yeah. The, no, the storyline was called No Fun. And the biggest thing, guys, Daredevil revealed some major possible Marvel comic events happening. Like the oh hell. god! Uh, oh I, no! But Here we go see, again. Cover your ears. Here we go again. You can see things, and you got to find out those events. You got to read it. So Avengers issue twenty, no fun. Check it out. Uh, ugly is beautiful. Maybe that's why my wife married me. Oh, Maybe she's no. into ugly things. Oh no! It could be. Yeah. Sawyer. That's probable. Hey. No. I didn't guys. ask for your input, Junior. Make sure we put the gloves on before we duke it out, guys. My second pick is Spider-Man Reptilian Rage, a one-shot, I believe. Mm -hmm. It's It goes back when Peter Parker was, well, he stayed the same age for a while, so it just it goes back. <laughs> it's a story of when Kurt Connors was the lizard, but he had no control. He, it's a, it gets a good story. It's, it's people break into Kurt Connors' lab and steal this lizard pet that he's been working on, and... He goes into a mad rage and transforms into the lizard, and Spider-Man chases him all over New York into the Natural History Museum, I believe. Mm -hmm. And he, they duke it out there, and he transforms back into Kirk Connor. It's a good book, Spider-Man Reptilian Rage 1. Man, it's, it's actually really good to pick up if you picked up uh, Craven the Hunted. Yeah, because it goes in and on because the lizard was in there. Yeah, this is actually before any of that happened, gotcha. but it's a good add more story to yeah. the backstory yeah, history absolutely. of the yeah. thing. Okay. All right, that is our picks of the week. All right, y'all, it's time for a little viewer mail where we answer your questions from our email address. I, why did I just blank on it? I don't it? know. It's just, it's Send your questions, comments, and concerns to... I don't know. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Comicreview at gmail.com. Once again, that's send your questions, comments, and concerns to mountaintopcomicreview at gmail. Dot com because we're professionals here. Yes, we know our email. Uh, our our question actually comes from Stephen, but I didn't catch where he was from. That's okay. So yeah. he could be from Zanzibar, yeah. for all I know. Stephen has asked a question kind of similar to a question we've talked about in the past. Uh, what do comics mean to you? Hmm. hmm. Well, Stephen, this is going to be. A uh, uh, question that is pretty dear to my heart. Let me tell you what comics mean to me. When I was little, uh, my father was diagnosed with cancer. And I had to spend a lot of time in hospital waiting rooms. I didn't get to get down and run wild and play. I had to sit and be quiet because that's really all I could do. And comics helped me escape. Uh, to a different place where I didn't have to think about all the, the bad things that were happening around me. As a matter of fact, during that time, uh, my father wanted to be out in the country. So not only did we uh, have to go to the hospital a lot, but we moved from the neighborhood that I loved more than anything in the world, we had to move. And so it was really, really difficult for me but comics got me through it. Believe it or not, these characters kept me focused, kept me grounded, and kept me uh, happy because the good guys always won in the mm -hmm. end. And they've stayed with me through all of these years, uh, through the good times and the bad times. Comics are more than just paper and superheroes and villains. They're just a part of my history. Richard, what do comic books mean to you? That was great, Charlie. Yeah, I mean, I don't feel like I should say anything. Oh, come similar, on. Similar, I mean, like, you know, comics, I'm always moving. It's, mm -hmm. it's hard for me to slow down. Mm -hmm. And for me, yes, the escape aspect of it, too. Mm -hmm. The fact that um, I'm always going and going and going, when I can actually sit down and read a comic, and I do, I try to, like, every day, it gives me a way to just escape, slow down, and just put myself in that book. Mm -hmm. Just dive deep in 
and yep. just be there and I just get so pulled nothing else around me kind of like is bothering me like there's no real like oh I gotta do this gotta do that I just kind of get right into the comic yep. and I, I fall in deep and the heroes that was so awesome of you saying that because it's that consistency something there all the time because yep. growing up I mean I've had to transition from you know big tests big finals um, you know a moving house we, my wife and I we, we had five different houses we moved in getting a job getting a new job mm -hmm. throughout it all there were heroes were always there Yep. So it's kind of like your parent, you know, or just anything, you know what yep. I mean? It's kind of like that that friend, that parent, whatever you want to interpret it as. Yep. But they're, that, that that comfort, that they're always there. Sure. And my biggest thing, Charlie, kind of like what you were saying was they always find a way. Yeah. The heroes find a way. And to be that consistent, to keep going, makes mm -hmm. you in your life kind of think, well, if they can do it, I can do it. Even Absolutely. though they're make-believe, there's something about it. Yep. I don't know. Yep. Sawyer, what about you, man? Well, kind of like you said, my mind is always thinking about a million different things. And I'm always worried about something. I'm always having anxiety about what? one big thing or another. Are you kidding me? No. Wow. I thought I was alone because I had yeah. the same thinking, too. Okay. My mind's like Go a ahead, spider sir. So it feels good to just sit down and focus on one thing where you know that in the end, no matter how long it takes, that good will prevail. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And they're gonna pull through. Mm -hmm. it, it's just, it feels good to be focused on one thing and not distracted by yes. anything else. Nailed yeah. it on the head there, I think. Yeah. 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 And you know, talking about good prevailing, you know, I've, I've been a bully over Sawyer for how long? Oh. And he's got the upper hand on me how many times? Yeah, a million. A thousand? Yes. Arm wrestling matches. One day I'll have my day in the sun. Trivia. The list goes one on. Day. <laughs> anyway, uh, Stephen from Zanzibar, oh. or wherever you're from, Mars, we just want to thank you for sending in the question. Remember, you can continue to send in your questions, comments, concerns, or insults to me at mountaintopcomicreview at gmail.com. I said it right. I said he it right. He did. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Sir, that's awesome, man. There you go. That's your viewer mail for this week. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that is another episode of the Mountaintop Comic Review. I made it in yeah. my sickly condition. It's a good thing I'm superhuman because I'm telling you, a normal mortal man would have been dead by now. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, I mean, like, honestly, yeah. You, no antibiotics, nothing. No. No. Uh, a lot of uh, things that we've got going on in our world. We've got two, not one, but two contests going on we right do, now. yes. Where you can win some... Uh, signed Don Teague Art Wonder Woman piece. All you have to do is go on to our Facebook page and like any of our comments, posts, whatever, yeah. and you're automatically entered. And we're going to be announcing that winner next week. Correct? Yes, and YouTube likes you can like on you can alter, enter three times mm -hmm. YouTube and uh, Podbean. Just any, any any of those three platforms there. Mm -hmm. And if you want to throw a comment in of uh, Hey Charlie, your head is shaped like a lemon, you can do that, and that gets you into a contest. And you hurt my feelings. So there. Double whammy. Yeah. 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 Also, we have another contest going on right now. Speaking of, uh, we had this gentleman on the show last week. Yes, we did. Dalton Vaughn. Right, guys? We yep. remember him. Funny man. Yep. Yes. He is giving us a copy of his uh, work in Mad Magazine, uh, number eight, I believe. Yeah. Signed. Golden signature. Yeah, look at that. It's going to be worth millions one day, and we're going to be giving it away to one of our lucky listeners. Now, how are we going to be doing that? Well, with the Wonder Woman, I do want to make a small correction. It's comments. So we're leaving, like, feedback oh. comments. So reviews, reviews, reviews. We're pushing for that. This one is simply likes on his video. So we did a video, a YouTube video. Mm -hmm. um, any likes on that video or likes on, I guess, sorry, what was it? YouTube, YouTube that we have. And Facebook. Yeah, this is strictly likes. The Wonder Woman was just comments. Leave us a, a review. I mean, a review. So Wonder Woman for I reviews. ruined everything. No, no, no. Ruined no. everything. No, 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 no. Absolutely. I still, I, no, guys, we're good. No, no gloves. Wonder Woman reviews. Uh, Dalton Vaughn Mad Magazine likes on the videos. And if, you, if you're unclear with any directions, they're on Facebook. You can check them out. You'll know what to do there. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we're excited, guys, at the giveaways, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. 
So we made it through another edition of the Mountaintop Comic Review. We want to thank, we're growing like yes. we are really quickly. And we want to thank everybody that's jumped on board with us. Uh, keep spreading the word, sharing our videos. Let everyone you know about the Mountaintop Comic Review. And remember, if you're in the Cookville area and you want to go do some comic shopping, you need to stop by the store. Mountaintop Comics right here in beautiful downtown Cook Vegas, Tennessee. Gateway to danger. They've got comics, back issues, graphic novels, Funko Pops, uh, tabletop games, tabletop games, and a whole lot more. The place is Mountaintop Comics, and don't tell him I said this, but Mike's a pretty good guy. Oh, pretty good. <laughs> okay. Oh. Okay. All right. Uh, anything else from you, Richard? I'm. I'm. I'm, I'm I think that's it. I, yeah, I'm good. Did I, I catch you off guard? I now? feel like I, 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 I was I, doing the parky bank. Blah, blah 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 blah. That's all, folks. I don't know, man. I was kind of just going for it. All right. Well, yeah. I think that I will be here next week, unless I'm in my weakened condition. I'm not able to make it to to Sawyer's joy. Because that means uh, he would get to be the star. You know, I'm I'm so sad if you can't come. Max He's crying. Is terrible. He's crying. He's really shedding. All, no, my eye tears. itches. Oh, okay, never mind. It's, yeah, don't sad don't worry thing. about it. I We're mean, gonna fight after sadness. this is over. Well, in the meantime, Sawyer, give him that ever so famous line. Keep reading. Till next time. So long, everybody. See you guys. <laughs>